Well, folks, this is a very, very different Inject Creativity live chat show. And thank you very much for, for joining us. Welcome to this different occasion. And we are recording this live on Twitter, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and on the Adobe in Education Facebook group. We're recording this live on Wednesday, the 26th of August, 2020. And I'm your host, Tim Kitchen, Adobe's Senior Education Specialist for the Asia Pacific region. This episode is dedicated to the life and work of Sir Ken Robinson, who very sadly passed away last weekend after a short battle with cancer. Before I introduce my co-hosts and the wonderful group of education leaders who are joining us for this special episode, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our lands, the first scientists and the first creatives. And we commit to building a brighter future together. Let's introduce you to my usual co-host, Erin Raithke from TAFE Queensland, and our special co-host for this episode, Clara Galan, the very famous Clara Galan <laughs> from the Adobe Global team. Hello, Erin. Hello, Clara. How are you? Hi, Tim. Hello, Tim. It's lovely to have you on the show. Erin's a regular, but Clara, it's very special to have you with us. So thank you for joining us all the way from Spain. Yes, a, a great time zone to join too. So uh, nice to see everybody. Clara, you've met Sir Ken and just tell us when you met him and what was the experience like? So I met Sir Ken Robinson in 2014 um, at my first BET conference in London. And at the end of each BET conference, there is a teach meet. So a teacher driven professional development event. And there was a surprise guest, Sir Ken Robinson did the keynote um, for that teach meet. Um, and it was incredible. I, I had the opportunity to meet him. And when you meet him, he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room and is just really um, empathetic. And I really enjoyed his, um, his presentation. That's great. And we've got lots of people who are joining us now. And it's so great to see Roland from the Philippines. Hi, and Timothy's a regular from Canada. He gets up really early in the morning in Toronto to join us. Erin, you wouldn't have met Sir Ken, but you've, I noticed oh, you've got one of his books with you. Yes, I didn't have the opportunity to ever meet him, but um, I remember when I first met you, uh, that was actually one of your questions in your presentation, um, was asking people if they um, were aware of him and his work. And um, so you were so passionate about his message and um, I figured that enthusiasm deserves some investigation. So I've actually, uh, two weeks ago, got this from the local library to to give it a read i'd bought some of his books and they're currently on my kindle so um yeah it was very odd when i saw your message to say that he had passed because i sort of looked around my house and went there's like three different things where i've been reading through his work and it is really inspiring and fascinating across a lot of different aspects of education absolutely and uh, John's with us. He, he's from Queensland. I know all the regulars. I know exactly where they're from because they're with us every every Wednesday night. John, thank you for joining us. He says, great to see you all on this sad occasion. Great to see Clara here. John, it is. It's a sad occasion. And I have to admit, mm -hmm. when I heard, and it was actually Joel Ahrens, one of our Adobe education leaders who posted uh, early Sunday morning. And so I was reading his Facebook posts and that's when I found out. And the rest of the day is just a blur. I, it was almost like losing a family member because mm -hmm. he played such an important role in the work that I do now and is such an inspiration to me personally, but to so many other educators. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. I'll just um, give you a quick story how I first met him. I think he thought that I was his official welcoming party. <laughs> I was in Brisbane. It was an Edutech conference. Uh, oh, four years ago, maybe maybe five years ago, I was doing an event for um, 
uh, for ISQ Independent Schools Queensland, and I was had my backpack on. I was about to get a get a taxi or a car to the event, and I saw this limousine pull up to the hotel that I was staying at, and I thought, "Oh, that's interesting." And I looked in the back of the limousine, and there he was. I recognised him straight away. I thought, "Oh my goodness, that's Sir Ken Robinson," and he was sitting with his son James, and I. I had to take the opportunity to go and say hello. I, I, I was awestruck. It was like meeting a celebrity, mm -hmm. but even better because I was just so awestruck. And as he came out of the car, I said, Sir Ken, welcome to Australia. And uh, <laughs> he said, thank you. And uh, he saw my Adobe logo that I was wearing and um, we had a conversation about Adobe and and uh, his son, James, said, would you like a photo with Sir Ken? Yes, would I? <laughs> Son James took a photo of me and Sir Ken together, and I was on a high. And I think I have been since then. It was just an amazing experience. As you said, Clara, he made you feel like you were the only person in the room. He just had that ability, this mm -hmm. amazing emotional intelligence, plus so many other intelligences within the man. So, yeah, that's an interesting story. We've got a little tribute to share before we introduce our, um, our special guests that we have for the chat show who have actually worked and met Sir Ken in a lot more of a detail than we have. Uh, so we're looking forward to introducing you to them very soon. So last weekend, the world lost one of the greatest ever advocates for education reform and creativity in education. His website provides the following information. Sir Ken Robinson died peacefully on the 21st of August, 2020, surrounded by family after a short battle with cancer. A New York Times best-selling author, he led national and international projects on creative and cultural education across the world, unlocking and igniting the creative energy of people and organizations. Sir Ken was the most watched speaker in TED's history, with his 2006 talk, Do Schools Cre Kill Creativity, being viewed online over 60 million times and seen by an estimated 380 million people in 160 countries. Amazing. He was named as one of Time, Fortune, CNN's principal voices, acclaimed by Fast Company magazine as one of the world's elite thinkers on creativity and innovation, and ranked in the Thinkers 50 list of the world's top business thinkers. In 2003, he received a knighthood from Queen Elizabeth II for his services to the arts. A loving family man, Sir Ken split his time between Los Angeles, California and London, England with his wife, Therese, Lady Robinson, their two children, James and Kate, son-in-law, Anthony and granddaughter. Joining us tonight are some outstanding education leaders who are here to share how Sir Ken has influenced their professional lives. Let's welcome Peter Hutton, Dan Hessler and Tanya Moran. Peter is a former school principal and now the convener of the Future Schools Alliance. Dan is a very well-known public speaker and education consultant. And Tanya is the acting head of digital technologies at Mentone Girls Grammar in Melbourne. Hello, folks. How are you all? Thank you. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Terrific. Peter, let's start with you. Just uh, tell us a bit about your journey, just briefly, from being a school principal to the work that you're doing now. Certainly, Tim. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our to our watchers. Um, I uh, my last uh, role within education was principal of Templestow College uh, in Melbourne, uh, where essentially we we moved a, um, a a dying school from 250 students to 1,200 and became one of the most innovative schools in Australia. Uh, and I was actually working with uh, another great. Luminary Professor Yong Zhao, and he said, one school is great, a hundred schools is better. So he challenged me to go out and start that. And so uh, that that uh, bore the start of the Future Schools Alliance, where we now work with 65 of the most innovative schools in Australia. 65 now, it's amazing. It just, it's really developed and grown in a relatively short space of time. Peter, we're gonna be hearing some more from you soon. Dan, tell us a bit about your journey Yep, so I was a teacher for um, about 15 years, um, a few years in the UK before moving to Australia in um, 2002, 2003. Um, but for the past seven, six or seven years now, I've been working as a consultant or as a coach, 
um, a lot in education, but also in different fields such as um, elite sport and, and also the corporate sector, and basically applying what we know about good learning um, in all those different um, environments to help people get the best out of themselves and, and each other. Thanks, Dan. And Tanya, you've had a really interesting career. Yes, you're, you're uh, currently working in a in a school in Melbourne, a girls' school in Melbourne. But before that, tell us about what you were doing before you were teaching. Uh, a uh, very long story. So uh, it's been 10 years since I've worked actually in a school. So I jumped back into teaching this year. Something was calling me and I think um, uh, the result of COVID-19 was probably the draw card there. Um, I've had a lot of roles in different industries. My last role was strategic procurement for the government. Um, so it was a completely different field, but in all my roles, I've touched on education, um, collaboration and leadership. So circan has been involved in my last 10 years. Clara, I think you've got a question for our guests. I do, yes. So um, curious, how did you first come across the work of Sir Ken? And maybe, um, Peter, we can start with you. Yep, certainly. So um, TED as an organisation has been around since I think 1985, something along that line, but it used to be a very exclusive uh, conference where you had to pay many many thousands of dollars. Uh, in fact, some of them were, were over 10,000 US in the early days. And in 2006, TED moved to a free online format and uh, Sir Ken was in fact one of the first ones to take part in, the, in that new format. And uh, I was lucky enough to be introduced to, to watching these TED Talks. And probably like most of us, when, when particularly back in those early days, once you got a taste of them, you really just, you know, you had to experience more and, you know, housework didn't get done. Things weren't repaired around the, the house on the weekend because it was just sort of in, enmeshed in these TED Talks. Um, and uh, I, I'd been at a, a reasonably innovative school and then I'd moved to... Uh, a school that was really Death Valley, as uh, Sir Ken liked to, to term it. And um, I guess it really gave me that inspiration back in 2006 to, to see whether we could actually build uh, a, a living example of the sort of um, uh, educational community that, that he spoke about um, at that time. And Peter, you've actually done a TED Talk yourself, haven't you? Yeah, it was, it was a funny one, a, t a TEDx talk, so it's a slightly scaled down version. And uh, I basically em employed my mother to just keep hitting refresh to, to get my <laughs> views up. But um, yeah, I think we've had almost almost 300,000 views of that, which pales into into insignificance yeah. against the great Sir Ken. In fact, during my, my TEDx talk, perhaps we'll uh, put the link up for that just to have a, have a few more hits. Um, but I actually re I actually referenced Sir Ken in, in that talk mm. back in, um, I think it was 2014, um, really with another call to action, probably as the majority of us will do tonight, saying mm. that, you know, it's already been a long time since Sir Ken, you know, first lit that fire in all of our hearts. And frankly, why haven't we moved further uh, down that pathway? Mm. And um, before uh, we ask Dan to answer the same question, let's have a look at some of the comments that have come in already from the people who are with us live. And we encourage you, if you're on with us live at the moment, just throw in some comments about your experiences with Sir Ken. And uh, it's interesting here, Mark Christie, who works with the Northern Territory Department of Education, but actually lives in Melbourne. <laughs> Mark Christie says, sad news, but his passion hopefully lives on through what we do. And uh, Adrian, who's also an educator in Melbourne, says, warm thoughts nourish on these cold winter days. It's great. So lovely thoughts and comments. We'll, we'll post up a few more as we go. Dan, tell us about your introduction to Sir Ken. Um, I graduated teaching college in 1999, and that year, Ken and a whole committee of it was it was only professor only professor uh, Ken Robinson then put a, uh, did a, a report called All Our Futures, and it um, as, as someone who was graduating, we actually spent some time because we we're seemingly um, mature fourth year students uh, mm. spent some time exploring this. Um, this document and to be honest 
because we were fourth year students, we probably weren't as mature as our, our lecturers thought we were. And we, I didn't actually think too much more about it um, until um, we saw the TED talk. And it was, it, I didn't even make the connections then, to be quite honest. It was like, oh, but you know, something rings a bell, hilarious talk, really poignant talk. And then um, sort of started connecting some dots. And then in 2010, I was given a scholarship off the New South Wales government to look at how best to address well-being and depression in education. And I based it all on if we could help kids find their element. And so the government paid for me <laughs> to go to the UK and spend time with Ken Robinson wow. and, and, and sort of talk about um, the, uh, and it's kind of bizarre. It wasn't just there. They also paid for me to go over the States. And, but it was an absolute highlight, as you can imagine, to um, go and spend time. I, I took my mum to meet him. <laughs> and, and Ken being Ken was just obviously, um, well, as everyone who has met him, you know, he's just incredibly, he, you know, I put that, the only thing I could feel to put out on Twitter was just, you know, his generosity of spirit. Like, mm -hmm. he, he, he there are some people you meet on the circuit who don't give a toss who you are, um, so long you know unless unless you're an avenue for for more work, they they couldn't care less about talking to you. Ken mm. speaks to anyone for as long as his entourage would allow him to, and he'd speak to everyone. And it was only because um, there are only so many hours in the day that he would be ushered off. <laughs> and so um, yeah, it just. You know, from that point on, so and then I've just been incredibly fortunate that um, many different organisations who put on these event type of you know edutech events or whatever in the UK the, the bet events or whatever they would see fit to put Ken and me on and and, and it just got to the point where um, you know like if he was in town we'd just go out for dinner and just be yeah you know, I wouldn't say it's quite funny I wouldn't say he was like a close friend but God he made you feel like one. And, um, yeah. you know, and, 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 and I wouldn't, you know, I'm certainly not an equal, but again, God, he made you feel like one. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like a bit like you were saying in your intro, um, Tim, you know, when it was bizarre, the experience that, um, when you find out he passed away, I was like, yeah. I, I am surprised, I am surprised at how I'm feeling here. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, and, and yeah, so it's been, it's, you know, it, it, it's been a very, yes, reflective period but that way i've been digging back through all my notes and interviews i've done with him and things like that the past few days and yeah it's been quite a uh, a reflective and and not not just somber but actually quite uplifting as well because as i say my, the memories i've got of him are just remarkable dan you wrote a book uh, a couple of years ago now you published your first book mm -hmm. and a school of thought is yeah. the, the name of the book and you gave me the honor of of mm -hmm. um writing um, an acknowledgement and um, do you remember what I wrote? I do yeah it, 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 people keep using it to introduce me which is a bit <laughs> embarrassing I told Ken I told Ken this and he went so so what Tim wrote was um, he's been describing Dan Hasler as Australia's Ken Robinson yeah. and I told Ken that and he went I don't think he's got that quite right <laughs> <laughs> No. Just had this amazing way that the thing about Ken is he has this amazing way of taking the Mickey out of you, but you never feel like it's uh, it, 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 you just have this real great laugh, you know, and and that's mm. what I mean about that idea of he makes you feel like a friend, even though to be honest, you know, I meet I might catch up with him, you know, once or twice every year or two at best, you know. So um, yeah, re remarkable man. Yeah. Tanya, with the background that you've had working now in a school, but in the past working for, for government, working for corporate organisations that are promoting uh, digital software and digital creativity and so on, in what ways has Sir Ken been an influence in your career? Um, I guess with in the last few days when I found out, um, based on your post on Sunday night, I've been doing a bit of reflection of when I first came across um, Sir Ken. So I came late into education. Um, I actually started my career off as a McDonald's store manager, believe it or not. Oh. Um, and by the time I came into education, I was only in a school for about four or five years before I was seconded into a big IT government project, and I won't tell you what it's called. Um, 
but during my mandated training sessions, um, I had all of these people at my training sessions and my learning management system wasn't working. So I had to actually find creative ways of um, running professional learning days on end, um, looking at technology. So at the same time, I started looking at um, Ken's work in regards to collaboration and leadership and using um, tools. So um, when I actually met him in 2014, I don't know what the joke was, but um, it, it was something mentioned about McDonald's and he, he was very funny and he actually made you feel um, welcome and, you know, warm, like he was your friend. So I remember that. But going into... Um, Catholic education system and then an engineering company, we used a lot of the work in terms of being creative and thought leadership in terms of um, not looking at um, a problem in you know one way, so looking at it from different perspectives. So a lot of our work was considering um, diverse perspectives and drawing that card out. So, and that, and that goes through all organisations, so. We often forget that we think of Sir Ken as, as an education guru, but he was a guru mm -hmm. in so many different other areas as well. Mm -hmm. Read his work. Just want to uh, bring up a couple of the comments that have come through. This is Shelley. She says, hard to believe such an inspiration is gone too early. And this Facebook user, unidentified, hey everyone, it's been a long time since I joined this group, but I had just had to honour Sir Ken. He was such an inspiration to my teaching practice and will remain so always. Thank you for offering this tribute. That's lovely. Thank That's you very lovely. much. Erin, you've got another question, I think. Yeah, well, actually, that um, that comment that that person made segues quite nicely. I was wondering if you'd like to contribute to sharing what aspects of Sir Ken's thought leadership you believe has helped push the most for education reform. And to give everyone else a break, we'll cycle back to you, Peter. <laughs> If you don't mind. Uh, that's fine. Um, I, I don't know if this is a socially acceptable analogy, but I actually refer, which has made everybody very cautious at this point, <laughs> but I, I actually uh, liken Sir Ken to John the Baptist. Uh, and for those that, you know, are of a biblical background or know the story, but, you know, John the Baptist was essentially the, the preparer of the way. And, you know, so I'd like to refer to, to Ken and have done in the last few days as uh, John the Baptist of education reform. So in many ways, in my view, he's, you know, like he was a peer without equal, but in terms of the thing that he did like no, no other person that I know of, was he really did prepare the hearts of students, of parents to receive that message that their kids were not broken, that it was in fact the system that was broken and not not their young people. And for me, um, you know, we would we would use uh, the link to his various presentations uh, as part of our, uh, I guess, promotion of the of the method of teaching at, at Templestowe. And it really had cut through like nothing else. You know, I would I would uh, talk to parents bringing their their children for um, interviews, and like they would almost be in tears, saying that you know it was really like somebody it had really spoken to them. And I think that's a common theme that we're hearing tonight. Like people that have not even, you know, had had the pleasure of meeting him face to face felt like they knew him. Uh, mm. And that's why there's been this, you know, great outpouring of, of emotion, I believe. Mm. For sure. Dan, your response? Yeah, I think, um, as I said, I've sort of was digging back through um, a few of the things that um, I'd recorded and, and wrote and, uh, about our chats and, some of the other um, things he's spoken on publicly. And for me, you know, when we talk about education reform, you know, it seems to be quite a slow kind of thing. Education reform happens because people like Peter decide to say, in this school, that isn't good enough and we're going to do it this way. And I think what Ken really, um, really tried to push, and to be fair, sometimes... Um, I don't think people really understood he was saying this, but he was basically saying, look, teacher, you're the system, you know, school leader, you are the system and and, and you can you can change this, you know. Uh, don't wait for the politicians because they just aren't in the game, you know. Don't wait for, don't even wait for, you know, a groundswell from parents. It's only when parents get to meet people like Peter and Peter can make the connections and join the dots 
that um, that revolu you know, the, 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 the reform happens in, in individual sites or as what we're hearing now with Peter in, in 65 sites, you know, and, 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 and growing. And for me, that was the... Um, the power in the message you know it's very easy to look and blame the system it's quite empowering to actually recognize that i am this my classroom is the system and mm. it's the only system that matters for these 24 32 kids whatever i've got in front of me and so you know and, and i think if people who engaged with ken on that on that level you know you could go to any school and find one two three however many but people realizing that and, and making changes accordingly so that was, you know, education reform in that sense. I thought, you know, very organic, very at the, at the, at the ground. Yeah, thanks. Can Dan. I ask a question of Dan, <laughs> just to Go break the it. format? Dan, when when you were presenting with with <laughs> Ken, did you ever did you ever see this? Because I, I certainly did. But where he would have the audience laughing, including the politicians, including the education bureaucrats, and they'd be in fits, and then then there'd be this sort of realisation come over them, hang on, he's talking about me? Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and he was a master at that, and, and as a public speaker, I've watched his talks over and over again, not necessarily for the content, but the, the way he delivers, and that, mm. that was the genius in the message. He would get you laughing. So that first talk, you know, the schools kill creativity, you know, of, a, of a, however long that talk is, let's say it's eighteen minutes. There's probably about four minutes where he's actually addressing that question. The rest yeah. of the rest of that is just opening some opening up, opening up, and then bang, he hits you. And yeah. that was the genius of him as a communicator because recognizing that once you're laughing, you know, your 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 mind is open then, and all of a sudden you can make that realization. You know, the other people who go in bullet a gate and automatically get the defenses up. They don't get that. They don't get that cut through in the way that um, Ken did, and and yeah, it was as much about his intellect as it was his ability to communicate. That for me was, um, yeah, it was beautiful to watch. You know, he was a master at it. So oh, that's wonderful. Sandra has got a comment here. Don't worry, he's hanging out with those other famous <laughs> Liverpool and George. Thank you. Sandra. And Roland from the Philippines from Manila is saying, I always make sure to play his video in our education roadshow to make sure they know he's this great educator. Thank you, mm -hmm. Roland. Keep mm -hmm. preaching words. Absolutely. We're um, about two and a half minutes away from finishing this part mm -hmm. of the event. And Jerry, I'll get you to bring up the Blue Jeans link for those who need it, because we'll be moving to that link very soon at the top of the hour, seven o'clock Eastern time. Tanya, last comments from you about Sir Ken before we move to the other room? I guess um, I wish I had gone before Dan and Peter. <laughs> just then. Um, I know how you feel. The message, the message of, you know, the education is a system. We built it. We can change it. We can recreate it. Um, that was the power in his message and he delivered it with humour. Um, um, and, and, and so and for me... Um, his his quotes of you know life is not linear maybe apply that into the education system as well we can change it Ken and Tanya you're doing an amazing job at Mentor and Girls and uh, this was meant to be your show today you're supposed to be showing off all the amazing things that you're doing at your school but we Next put time. it on hold. we will be uh, finding some time for you to, to share that because I've been very impressed with just the one year that you've been at the school to be able to make such a huge difference and it's terrific. So congratulations to the work you're doing. Okay. Peter, last reflections from you, sir. Oh, goodness. Sorry. I, I thought I'd, I'd finished. I've mentally switched <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> I guess, look, you know, I guess the, the obvious thing is the call to action. Um, you know, it's a life that that in many ways was, was an extraordinary life, lived powerfully. Um, you know, I guess... In, in some ways made even more poignant by his early passing because I really feel, I, felt, I don't know about the other panellists, but I felt a vacuum and that's a scary thing, you know, there's this vacuum and it's not that we want, and not, you know, the Messiah to step into this vacuum. It's about all of us stepping into that space. It's like he, it's like he again made way. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Peter. We, we think we all need to speak to the influence of his legacy and... And be mindful of the fact that now that he's not there to mm. to provide that leadership, then then we all uh, it's all of our responsibilities to to stand up and say, 
This Especially Dan Hessler, thing. the Australian version of Sir Ken Robinson. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> L- last comment from you, Dan. Yeah, I just I always um, spoke about Ken. Kind of, you know, he 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 shone the light. Um, he didn't necessarily tell people. Um, you know, in fact, he was very he was very short on telling people how to do their jobs. But he shone the light. He said, "That's the direction." And and I think, um, as Peter alluded to there, I think that the um, if you're interested in honouring his, his legacy, then the best thing you can do is wake up tomorrow morning and say, "All right, well, what what can I do? I'm I'm the system. What what can I do?" And and there's so many people who um, you know collaborate in this space that you, you're certainly not on your own. You might be on your own in your school, but you're not on your own in in you know in in the greater sense of the of the word. So um, yeah, I think just. Get get out and, and have a go. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for contributing to this chat show, the first part of our tribute. The second part is jumping into a Blue Jeans room now where we'll have a, a slightly less formal approach and a lot more opportunity for people to throw in comments and chats and, and, and contribute. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're now going to be moving to our Blue Jeans room. See you then.